Are you going live now? Yeah, we're live. Good morning. We are? Yes. Hello. We started just a little bit early. Oh, oh look we at sure these. did. Look at those bags. I wonder why. Well, good morning, everyone. Hello. Welcome Hello. To... Look, there are people here, and we're super um, last minute. We are last minute, and we're not prepared. No. We had we had a weekend, y'all. Sure did. <laughs> we had a good two weeks, so. Yeah. No, it was really it was really nice. It was a good two weeks. Um, so we're gonna, for those of you watching after the fact, hello, welcome. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. This is episode 96. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. And today is October 1st, 2023. Wow. We are officially in it, y'all. We are. And we are podcasting from Connecticut. And is that normally our intro? Sure. We're sure. gonna call it that. Woohoo! How All exciting. Right. Hello, everybody, for joining us. Oh, hi, hi Trina from Harlem from or Hamden. Hamden. My eyes, my contacts. We have Norway, Australia, Oregon, Quebec City. Hello, B Vancouver. Wow. Look so, at all of you people joining us for the last minute little hello, hello. That's great. I'm. That's really exciting. I didn't think we were going to have anybody. I know. We had to rush that. Well, not rush this, no. but we. it's unplanned because we do have to go out, get a gift bag, a card, and some, what's that stuff called? Tissue paper. I was going to say some food. And food. We need to eat lunch. And then we have our niece's first birthday at one o'clock Eastern time. Yes. So we weren't sure how we could. Oh, hi, Daryl. We met Daryl yesterday at Brooklyn General. Sure did. So we weren't sure how, like if we were going to be able to podcast today. And we'd like to stay on schedule. Otherwise, yeah. I think it gives us a little anxiety if we don't. So. Totally. And the lives are easier for us because they automatically upload right to YouTube. We don't have to worry about, not that we edit or anything like that, but we don't have to worry about, you know, waiting for the that time. to go and then like making sure that everything is good to go so we can leave the house. So anyway, this is what we're going to do. We will have show notes um, probably at a later time. So it won't be today. Um or maybe later tonight. But anyway, yeah. keep checking back. We will have show notes. And if you, of course, if you have questions, definitely, you know, leave a comment or shoot us a message and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Or pay close attention and your show notes will be presented to you live. Yes. Yes. And um, somebody asked if I finished the sweater. I did not, Stephanie. No. No. You got pretty close. I did. Uh, you know what? So... This was interesting. I've never had this happen to me. So if you guys have watched previous episodes, I'm knitting the Kirby sweater. It's yeah. the second one. And there was a update to Apple's operating system for the iPhone right. and the iPad about two weeks ago. So whatever happened with that update, my that pattern, the font of the actual pattern doesn't work in GoodNotes anymore. So I wasn't able to read it. I even had um, Aquila from the Lefty Knitter podcast send over um, her copy so I could see if it worked, if it was just mine and it didn't work. So I had to print it out yeah. and I left the printed copy home while we were in Brooklyn this past weekend. So I And I told him just to out. wing it, you know, because that's my MO, but Kevin's no. a profesh. So he decided no. not to. We don't wing. No. Hi, Michael. Hey, Todd, Welcome. Michael. And hello, Michael. How Look are you? Good friends. morning. So. Let's All jump. right, so we, yeah, we'll do it like a regular episode, eh? Yeah, we're going to treat it like a regular episode. So let's get with right some hellos um, along sprinkled in and answering some questions. We had a lovely two weeks. We did. So yeah, let's go over our two weeks and okay. then we'll jump in add many stuff. So Great. two weeks ago. Also, I will preface this by saying oh, there look. is there is a lot of um, acquisitions. Oh, um, y'all. We broke every bank in the east on the East Coast. It's unnecessary. Completely. But and, necessary at the same time. And disrespectful to our bank account is yeah. all I have to say. Yeah, we're kind of in a little bit of a fight. They're not speaking to us, our bank account. But it's okay. We do it for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're a jerk. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about our two weeks. So we really did baby. We did nothing really after podcast week. So last oh, what I did well, after that. What? No, go ahead. So after our last podcast, we didn't do anything, did we? You mean like Sunday or Saturday? Saturday or Sunday. No, that weekend was good. We did okay. like our regular grocery shopping and stuff. So during that week on Thursday, I had it. Did I bring it up? Yes. So um, if you guys Kate, can see this stuff all around us. It's really embarrassing. I know. So Kate, our bestie from um, the Knitting Posse. One, one of our besties. One of our besties from the Knitting Posse. We don't posse. play favorites. We don't. No, I'm just kidding. We don't. 
Send um, us a message if you want to know who our favorite is. <laughs> Kate offered to help me with seaming my sweater. So I went over and we had lunch. We seamed the saddle part of my saddle shoulder. And then Laura came over and Kim came over too. So we just had a little little get together. And um, yeah, I, we're both feeling better. Were we sick last time? Was that the one where we weren't feeling great? Yeah, we were. It was kind of like that funky cold that was going, you know, back and forth. We were just like super tired. COVID negative, but like just super tired and just yeah. feeling like under the weather. You were sick for a full like week. True. Yeah. Um, um, hi from the Netherlands. Hello, hello, Wendy. Wow. So that was that week. And then last weekend on Saturday, we went to visit Skane Yarn Shop. They were having a Red Stag Fiber Trunk Show. So we wanted to see some of Josh's yarn in person, although we did have some. So we headed there. We added it. to our collection. We did. We enhanced our Red Stag Fiber. We did. Quantities. We went. Your mother joined us. Yeah, my mom came. We drove up. It was a two-hour drive, which was, it went by pretty quick. Skane. Yeah. They had these amazing mugs. They have Cute like merch mugs. now. They're coming out with tote bags. I don't know if it's they're out yet. Um, but I know they showed it on the last episode. I know I, I kind of want one. I'm I'm totally feeling tote bags lately. Yeah, so we got to um, see Lori, Lori, who's the owner of Skein, mm -hmm. and unfortunately Justine wasn't there. Sorry, Justine, we missed you. Yeah, we did. Maybe next time. Yeah, you'll stop planning vacations around visits. I know to the store. Get the memo. Um, <laughs> we yeah, so it was a lovely time. We went. We hung out for a couple of hours. Did some knitting. Um, and the vibe is exactly like, it's so good. And it was like just as good as the first time that we went, yeah. you know, the, the table is the focal point. We talked about that last time. Like we just sat around and we knit, we chat, we shopped a few times. That's the problem though, sitting around the table is that you're surrounded by all this gorgeous I stuff. Know. And you think that like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I've gotten everything that I've wanted to get. And then you see something out of the corner of your eye. Then you have to get up and investigate and then you decide, oh, well, this might look good with this and maybe I should look at this. But everybody is so helpful and it was so cool because um, like the the people that were there were just like helping each other out, like choosing colors and um, and yarns and all that. Um, we saw our, our wonderful friends, Olivia and Robin. We did. We hung out. Olivia brought some delicious pastry. She did. Mm -hmm. She sent us home with pastry. She too. did. Yeah, it was. Just, it's a lovely shop. We had a great time. Great community. Um, you know, we got to, again. We got to see um, Lori. Jen was there, and I forget everybody else's name. I'm so bad with names. I'm, I'm really good with faces, but I'm so bad with names. Yeah. So that was a fun time, and it was a quick trip. It was only an hour and a half drive this time. Yeah. Um, that was the weekend that the hurricane or tropical storm Ophelia was supposed to like hit. We didn't get much impact mm -hmm. from it. So it was a good, great drive there. Great drive home. Um, and then that Sunday we had our God children's Christmas. Yeah. So Ray is the godfather of our niece mm -hmm. and I'm the godfather of our nephew. Yes. So it was really, it was really cute. We, um, you know, we went to, to do the church thing. Um, you know, stood up there. They had live music and everything. And then, yeah, they had a band at church. Yeah, it was weird. Not weird. I no. just something that I've never experienced before. Yeah, like a band band. Yeah, and it was like a sing along. They had it on like the um, like a projector or whatever, which was cool. Yep. And then we went back to we had a little bit of a break, which was nice because then we got to change and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Then we went back later on in the afternoon to your brother's yeah. house and just hung out. Had yeah. some brunch, so that was that. And then they had a nice spread for brunch. They did. It was yeah, delicious. It was really good. I'm starving. And then this weekend, we went to Brooklyn. Guys, that was eventually we got to Brooklyn. So if you're not on the East Coast or maybe in the tri-state area, you wouldn't have been impacted by this, but there was a hell of a storm. And it dropped a lot of rain in a very short period of time. Yeah. So we left to go to Brooklyn on Friday. We were catching like a train out of Stratford at 12 o'clock. Our anticipated arrival time at the um, hotel that we were staying at in Brooklyn was 2 p.m. Right. We got there at 4.30. Yeah. A little so, after that. Yeah. So um, we got. So we thought taking the train would be good. The it, problem, I think the issue too, is that we didn't, we didn't look ahead at the weather. You don't, I mean. New York has such a strong infrastructure that you don't realize um, 
And then when things go wrong, things go really wrong. So our train, we ended up, we're on the train. The first one we got to the train station, we noticed that the first one was canceled. We're like, this is really interesting. I wonder why. And then, you know, it was drizzling a little bit. And then next thing you know, finally our train came because we were questioning, like, maybe our train's going to get canceled. We were talking right. to our sister-in-law <clears throat> who um, travels to, to New York. She's from New York often. And um, we get on the train and we're like, okay, we're going to make it. My brother's sending me messages saying that the, you know, all transit is canceled. We're like, what? So then the conductor comes over and is like, um, change of plans. We're going to be dropping this, dropping you guys off at New Rochelle, which yes. is not a normal stop on no. the Metro North. And we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then like, we were trying to figure out directions from Metro North. I know Max, seriously. Hello, Max. And Hello. Vincent. And anyway, like long story short, we're, we're trying to figure this out. And then it was going to take forever to get from there to Brooklyn. Cause we didn't know that the lines were shut down in the subway. Hello, Paula. Then they changed their mind and said, no, we're going to end up dropping you off at White Stone, White, White something bridge, White Stone Bridge or White Hill Bridge. I don't know. In the Bronx. So we got dropped off in the Bronx somewhere. And they kicked us all off the train and said, everybody <laughs> off. Everybody out. So <laughs> it's, we, now it's pouring at this point. Yeah. Thank God we had umbrellas. White Stone Bridge. Yeah. White Stone Bridge. White Stone Bridge. And so then we had to get off and try to find out where we go. So right. we jumped on the, the two. two. So again, and as we're waiting for the two to come, there's all these announcements saying uh, it's going to be shut down at this point or shut down at this point. They didn't know. They literally Nobody didn't knew. know. Which I get, you know, things were happening so fast. So we get on the two thinking that we're going to go into Manhattan. And then on the two... They the conductor, kick. yeah, the conductor comes on and says, we're going to get off at this stop. And then, oh, no, just kidding. We're going to we're going to go on to this stop. Then finally, we get to what's it? Central Park. Yeah, I guess, somewhere around there. Yeah, we got dropped off at like it was one something, but it was right outside Central Park. So yeah. then we had to walk from there to catch either the A or the C. Yep. And then the A was canceled. So so anyway, like, again, get off the train everybody off people are trying to get on oh. they're like yelling get off the train blah 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 blah. it was wild and we were underground at the platform and there were just people everywhere and we were at a full stop and i was i was just starting to get a little bit like frustrated then there were some nasty smells like and it, i'm kind of claustrophobic so that really like being stuck underground with it felt like a thousand people yeah. surrounding me and the air was not necessarily fresh no it was it was not a fun experience yeah. by any stretch of the imagination it was not fun but once we got on the final subway it took us straight to a yeah. two-minute walk to our hotel yeah we it stayed. was about a 30 minute subway ride yeah we stayed at it was a great hotel yeah, what the heck's the name it with ace, an a. ace hotel in um brooklyn it was a beautiful hotel ace yes yeah. and then we found a little like brewery yeah nearby um what was it called sis sis um circa 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 oh, you're so great. so it was circa we went there had some burgers and fries i said with ray when we were there i was like oh this kind of reminds me of when we went to that little brewery in montreal, uh, montreal. Mm -hmm. like it was the perfect end of a day totally. we had a flight of some uh like ipas or sour beers and a good burger and fries. And that some. pretzel, that beer cheese. Oh pretzel. my God, oh, yeah. so good. Pretzel with beer cheese and some wings. Yeah. And just went back to the hotel and hung out. And then yesterday, we went to Brooklyn General. We did. We um, were we lucky were enough. The whole day. Yeah, we were lucky enough, um, as you guys know, to be asked by Pala from Mayak Yarn to host the Hohe Summer Knit Along and that ended yesterday. Yeah. So we went and did our final Zoom at Brooklyn General. At... Which was recorded. Um, yes. And Paula is going to post that on her um, YouTube channel. And if you go to her YouTube channel, you can see the previous um, uh, Zooms that we had. If you want to catch up, they're all there. So this will be the third one, I believe, that yes, we did. it is. So it was a lot of fun. We did it right from the shop. So people were like coming in and, and browsing. And I was completely distracted because 
we got there and then um, we didn't really shop at all because we within like a half an hour we were sitting at the table. Yeah. Um, doing that, but we definitely did a lot of shopping. It was a lovely time. It was. We got we had, to announce some winners. So like, yeah, one, the bag. Right, one of our bags, and then I gave. If you guys saw this on Instagram, somebody won this set that I dyed up for my Stephen West. So I have to re dye it this week for myself. Yeah, but we gave that away. So those are some new colors that I have to dye up this week. Yep, and there are some very special prizes um, as well that are uh, going to be pulled from the Ravelry threads. Yes, and. Um, yeah, so there. I don't want to say anything. So we'll we'll wait. I don't. I don't. No, I don't we'll wanna... say it. We didn't get to show. We were supposed to show it, but the store got really busy, and I think our Zoom got cut a little bit shorter than what we thought. It was we were still going an hour. I think. So I was very fortunate, and I received some yarn from Mayak to attempt to dye because I've never dyed a non-superwash yarn. Right. So um, Palisent over some of the Tibetan cloud, I dyed it up on some existing colorways on Ghostwater. And Ghostwater, Lapis Lazuli, Arrakis, Sandworm, and Spice. Oh, look at those balloons. Oh, I know. It's Who fun. did that? That's a new um, feature with iOS stuff. What? So um, we will be giving, that will be a prize for some people in the Ravelry threads. Yes. So that was really fun. It was a very different experience, um, dying up some non-superwash, but it was nice to get my feet wet in that little... Yeah realm and they're yarn. beautiful the skeins of her yes her yarn is gorgeous we've knit with the um tibetan cloud medium mm -hmm. it's a beautiful base so that was a lot of fun so thank you paula yeah and uh, then we got to do like a hang out in the store meet yeah. some of you all and chat and that was fun because that was a lot of fun a couple people had it's fall y'all um mm -hmm. somebody had the hohe's lightweight hipster yes knit in that and that was really pretty and yep. then and we met her daughter who is yes, teaching to yes. knit so she's gonna knit for her sister she was so cute she bought some um yarn to do a scarf mm -hmm. she got some new needles she was gonna do a hat yeah she was very cute yeah and then we got and she see... had a beautiful name and i cannot remember I her name but she, it was a beautiful name um no I, there was no felting it was a much better experience, I think, than I was anticipating. Um, I actually also thought the yarn took the dye a little bit quicker than a superwash. Excuse me. Hello, Jeff. That was rude. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Um, what else? So, and then um, Thea Coleman was like oh, our we... bartender for the night, which was really cool. Yeah, so, we got to meet Thea Coleman. Yeah, so that was nice. She was there um, nice and early, so we kind of we got to hang out and chat. She's lovely. What a lovely person. Yeah. Um. So she ended up do we did a cocktail hour, hour, two sure. hours. It was from four to six in the back of the shop. Um, she had everything set up. She did a, a really delicious, like grapefruit smoky whiskey, which I didn't get the name of the whiskey. Um, she was she was busy bartending and um, it was nice. And we chatted with just, you know, the people that were there and talked a lot about like knitting and what everybody does for a living. It was really fun. Yeah. It was a cool event. It was really fun too. So we met two sisters and I don't remember their names. I, they had on their Delacue oh, messenger yes. bags with like pins and they were just so much fun to talk with. So and, much fun. Um, one of them had the it's fall y'all in the bag. And yeah, she was like, I'd reached out to her in the something. week and it was just really fun to, like I messaged her about something like in order and then to see her in person. That mm -hmm. was, it was just really fun. It was a, you know, the small world. Yeah. It's fun for us to make those connections, you yeah. know, like we do feel like when we meet people and that's why I'm such a hugger. Like I don't, you know, if, I feel like we're all friends too, even though you guys know a little bit more about us than we know about you, but <laughs> you know, true. <laughs> true. So, and then, yeah, so then, and today, like we said, we're doing this, and then we have to head to a birthday party yeah. in a little bit. So, so that's let's... been our adventures in our two weeks. Oh, add mini stuff. We'll do that quick. Okay. So, we have, um, let's hear it for the boys, wrapped up yesterday. Yes. The So, we'll pull prizes for that and announce them on the, oh, I thought it was you. It was Kelly and Ismelda. Oh, fun. Hi, friends. Hi. Um. We 
We'll pull prizes for Let's Hear It for the Boys and announce it during the next podcast. Yes. Yeah, we have a lot of prizes. Um, so we were kind of talking about how we're going to split that all up. So we need to lay it all out um, and determine how many winners we're going to choose, which yep. will be more than two for sure. Um, and then we'll go from there. Yep. So that ended yesterday. Also, the summer knit along, the Hohe summer knit along ended yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. And today starts the needles at the ready does crochet knit along or crochet along and crochet that will along. go until the end of november the hashtag is going to be natr does crochet and we will have threads up on ravelry tomorrow okay good commitment there um yes yeah, so we are yes yeah, so the with the crochet along um i mean i'm we're consider like whips are allowed if you're working on something we really want to show some crochet, some love. And I've been doing a lot more crochet uh, lately as well. Right. And we get a lot of requests, um, you know, to show more crochet. And I think it's a really cool opportunity because crochet is super hot right now. Like there were a, a bunch of people that came into the shop hmm. yesterday that were wearing granny, um, granny square, like tank tops and sweaters yeah. and things, which was, it's, it's so, it's so in. And I think it's super cool. I'll show you what I've been working on. Um, so yeah, you know, just, pick up the hook and, and crochet something. There's, you know, we'll no limits just do, you know, and it's then, a whip, do a square, do something, um, with some crochet Tunisian crochet. Yeah. I, Tunisian crochet is really fun. I did a, a bunch of dishcloths with Tunisian crochet and I was, I really liked that technique. So try something new. And absolutely, absolutely. You can do a knit and crochet design. There are several of those out. I, know I socks love that. And a sweater mm -hmm. and something else, I believe. Mm -hmm. So for sure. Yep. Um, so that's that. And then we did draw a winner from our last podcast. We are doing a, um, we have a pride set that we want to um, gift to somebody. Mm, good job. Say that. Thank you. Good job. And that was, um, that was donated to us by always be kind yarn, which is awesome. Here is the prize package and we pulled the winner today. So you get a really fun pair of uh, needle stoppers, which I can, I love these needle stoppers, self-striping yarn, a stitch markers. There's two of them in there and a uh, coordinating mini there. This is on the pride ally stripes. Um, they're a part of their uh, pride rainbow flag set. So it's 75% fine superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it's absolutely stunning. We didn't open this package, so you get it just the way it is. And we'll announce the winner right now. Um, and while he's pulling that up, absolutely, Amigurumi is... Oh, for sure. Um, a lot is Can be done for the crochet. Yes. For sure. 100%. Okay, so our winner for the uh, Pride set is Wanda... I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but I will flash your last name up here. Um, it says, Pride, what a beautiful kit to make socks for my beautiful daughter. Well, I can't wait to see what you come up with for your beautiful daughter. So that is you. If that is you, Wanda, please email us. Um, our email address will be linked down below, or you can go to our website, needlesattheready.com, um, and shoot us an email saying that you were the winner with your mailing address, and then you're in. That's it. I'm Maximoff. Dad. What? It's a, well, he said Wanda Maximoff. Oh. Maximoff. All right. Was, so, we watched that not too long ago. I know. I think that's it. Right? Let's get into some, I think um, that's the administrative stuff. We've got to figure out. We have a lot of coupon codes and things. We're running into a little bit of a problem with our, our show, notes. show notes because we're getting cut off. Um, and we have to like, I guess we only have 5,000 characters, which our show notes are pretty detailed. So we have to figure out a way to cut that back. So we're trying to figure that out, figure that out. But there are a lot of coupon codes and I think it's important for us to share them because these makers have been, you know, so generous with that. Yeah. So, and you've all been taking advantage of that, which has been great. We have two, we have a new one too. That's for skein yarn shop. Yeah. That is going to be available. They do um, online orders. So that one's going to be down below. Um, I'm going to see if I can find so it. So you can get maybe a mug or a tote bag and send one my way. <laughs> Hold on. Where is... So while he's looking at that... Um, I got it. I, okay. So for Skein Yarn Shop, the code is NATR15, and that 
gets you 15% That's off That's humongous. And then we also have a new affiliate link. We were contacted by the um, fantastic company Twice Year Cheap. Yes. So we are now um, affiliates of Twice Year Cheap. So we are going to have that affiliate link down below. And Twice Year Cheap, and I didn't bring them up because, of course, we're, you know, we Not never prepared. are prepared. Um, they have a lot of really cool um, little, like, notions that are in um, stitch markers that will help identify the front of your work, the back of the work, when to do an increase, when to do a decrease, the, the row chain counter. row counters, which are really cool. Um, so you can keep track of how many rows you do before you're decreasing or whatever you want to do. Um, so anyways, uh, leave a comment, at, leave the codes as a comment under the video. Oh, oh and then that's a, maybe a good idea. Okay, we'll think about it. Michael, that's we'll a, chat. Oh, I get it. I see now. I like that. Okay. Me too. Good job. Yeah. Good call. Thank you. Um, and I think that's all the admin stuff. So we'll get into some knitting. The first thing we're going to jump into is that we were sent a beautiful package. You're going to hear it first, probably here, maybe. Yeah. From um, Brooklyn Tweed. They are launching a new yarn base on October 11th. Um, it does say we could start talking about it as early as uh, September 27th. So yes. we're there. So the new base is a chunky weight yarn. It's called Arbor Lodge. It's gorgeous. It is a seven ply yarn. Oh my gosh. Right. So it's, uh, it's American chunky weight, American Targi. It is sourced from Montana and South Dakota spun in Springvale, Maine and died in Philadelphia. So it is a seven ply worsted spun it is 125 yards and it you get a hundred gram hank. So we have two of the and it's 23.5 microns, which means that it's uh very soft. We have two of the 13 colors that they're gonna be releasing. Yeah. So the first color is natural. It's like so bouncy. It's a really how... right. So Arbor Lodge. That's natural. And then this one is kiln. So it's a nice clay color. Yeah. It's really, really pretty. Look how pretty. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Somebody Vincent. Making, somebody making inappropriate jokes. Vincent. Vincent. Okay. So Isn't that cool? Yeah, there are. So keep your eye out for that because the launch, the you October should be 11th. Able, yeah, you'll be able to purchase it starting October 11th. Um, and I've seen a couple... Oh my god, they're so good. Patterns, a I sweater, wish and a um hat for this. We should just do a hat. I don't think I have a chunky weight hat. I don't I don't either. knit with chunky weight at all. I've yeah, me neither. But so. look at the so the gauge is three to three and a half stitches per inch. <laughs> yeah, it's That's a really, nuts. really beautiful base. Yeah. Hello, Austin. So Austin is has donated some of yes. his patterns for our crochet along. So thank you, Austin. And we'll talk more about that on the next podcast. All right. So now for our knitting, I have one finished object, which I don't have with me, and two whips. What do you okay. have? I have two finished objects, but it's basically a set okay. together. So I'll talk about them together. And I used um, a cool app to do that. So I don't know if you want me to go first while you're looking at the picture, or if you want to show your picture first. I'll show mine really quick. Okay. Um, so I did finish our nephew's anchor sweater. I did the nine month, nine to 12 month, and it is knit out of the Barocco Remix Light. Yeah. What a great base. Knit on a US six and a four. And I wish I had it here because I would show you guys. It's the best seaming of underarms that I've ever done. <laughs> Like there were no. Let me pat you on the back. Thank you. I was very impressed with with the um, not having any underarm holes on there, but yeah. it was super cute. I loved. I really do love the remix light. So mm -hmm. that was done, and I stayed up till we did a um, last Saturday. We did an underworld marathon. Oh yeah, so that did. I could finish the sweater. Yep. So I was up till about 1130 or we were up till 1130 so I could finish the two sleeves because I took it with us to Skane and I'm knitting the sleeves while I'm at Skane and I looked and I was like, oh, I dropped a stitch. 
So I was like, okay, I have to rip some out and um, pick up that stitch. But then I looked at the pattern as one does because I don't read it often and forgot that I didn't do any of my sleeve decreases. So my sleeves were really, really long yeah, or wide rather. So I ripped out the entire sleeve. I was ready to start ribbing, ripped out the entire sleeve and redid it. And then sleeve number two, Saturday before the christening. So that was that. That's my only FO. Okay. It's really, it was really, really, it's pretty. adorable. It's going to look, it's going to look really nice on him. And I love the choice of the green. Me too. For that, instead yeah. of going the traditional like baby, male baby is like a blue. Yeah, no, I think you that's know, a baby yeah. blue. Yeah. Really great job. Um, and then this is going to be gifted to our niece today for her first birthday. Um, I did a, I just want to pull up the, so we talked about this a while ago. Um, Tin Can Knits came out with their own knitting app and um, I have to update it, but it's the, it's just called Tin Can uh, Knits. If you search on the, on the app store, and I believe it's, it's for both um, Apple or iOS and what's the other one? Wait, so you guys got commercial. So I'm going to actually talk about this for a second. People are saying that there's commercials there in the live. Really? YouTube. This is something that's tricky with them. Sometimes they make, they recently made a change to their, how often they throw commercials in. Hello, Taylor. Hi. So they, it's, and I've noticed this on other podcasts yeah, that same. we've watched. And if you don't, when we record an episode and we post it to YouTube, we can control the commercials. We can, but you have to actually manually go in and do it. You have to place them or ask to not place them in places. So apparently with the live, we don't have that control until after the live is up. Yeah. Cause I've never seen one during no, it. We had to choose. We had a selection. We had to choose conservative, moderate, and then heavy on the ads. So we went with conservative. That's the yeah. only option that we had. So um, I'm sorry. It's just, yeah, it's just, YouTube made a change yeah. sometime in September and the commercials can get a little bit out of control. So yeah. If it, anybody knows how to disable that during a live, I mean, let us know and we can, you know, we can definitely look into that because we don't want to have that um, happen, especially during a live. Hold on. You talk. I'm just going to look at stuff. Okay. Here. Oh, okay. Hold on. I think I just shut them off. Hopefully. Maybe. All right, we'll see. All right. Let us know if you see another one come through. So anyway, like I was saying, we I used the Tin Can Knits um, app. Oh, I left the ball band downstairs. Son of a gun. I wanted to do... So our niece was born, obviously, in October. And they're very, very knit worthy. Um, her mother, our sister-in-law, loves hand knit things. And yeah. she loves things that um, like coordinate to the season. And so last year I made uh, pumpkin, I crocheted pumpkin hats, which I'll probably do some more of that. So we had this skein of yarn uh, from, I believe it's two Rhinebecks ago, I think, um, from uh, Woolens and Nosh. It's called Fall is My Favorite. It's self-striping DK. And I said, you know what? I want to do, let me do a hat. It's nice and fall. I think it'll be really cute. So I pulled up the Tin Can Knits pattern uh, or app and this is basically what it is so you choose what you want to do um so i did the um the hat not the hatch hat the barley and what happens is as you go through and these are free patterns which is really nice right it's their free patterns mm -hmm. you choose the size that you are knitting for you choose the um the weight of the yarn and then it gives you everything that you need specifically for this pattern. So you go through and then there are, um, there are little, oh, it's going to get washed out a little bit, but there are little tutorials in there too. If you need help to learn how to, you know, do a decrease, how the construction goes. And then as you go, it tells you, sorry, turn down your brightness. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't know how to do that. Okay, perfect. Good job, Kevin. And then as you go through, you can like check off that you've done round one, round two, and it just, it keeps track of the pattern for you. 
So I, I will show you that in a second. I did the barley. Isn't that cute? So you have your um, your garter ridge panel, garter panel on one side and stocking it on the other. This is fall is my favorite. And this is, I believe, is 100% superwash uh, merino. Oh, is it? I think it's merino. I'm pretty sure it's merino. The tag is downstairs, but I love how plump this yarn is. It's very, very round. I really love her her colors. Yeah. Um, is there another commercial that came through? No. Oh, okay. So um, I was thinking about adding a pom pom, but I'm not going to. I think it's I no, think it's I cute the way that it is. Yeah. And I had um, some yarn left over, so then I decided. Well, let me make some matching mittens. And Tin Can Knits has the world's simplest mittens, which is another free pattern. And it's also on the um, it's also on the app. So this is the world's simplest mittens. It's a great pattern. So easy. And I made I made the one-year-old size and I had the yarn left over. So I made two little mittens. So cute. For her, right? Yeah. So now, I mean, the, they're not matchy-matchy, which is fine. I think they're kind of fun that way for yeah. a kid. And so now she'll have a little a little set. Two mittens and the um, and the hat. Very cute. Right? Yeah. So that was my, um, that was my FO. Um, no, I'm not going to speak that. Super cute. I was going to say, maybe that's what we do for the rest of the nieces and nephews for Christmas. Then what would we do for her for Christmas? The gift she's not getting today from me. Oh, good idea. <laughs> Great. So that is all of our FOs. Let's talk so about those whips. are our FOs. I okay. Two. How many do you have? Um, two and a half. Okay. All right. Three. So, okay. So, okay. Just found another one. Okay, you go first. I just sit here and do nothing. Um, I'll show this one. <laughs> I'm gonna consider this a whip. Mm. Oh, well, I'm going to consider this a transition. This is also a whip. This is also a purchase. This was a purchase from Skein. Mm -hmm. So on the way up to Skein, Kevin said that he noticed during their, one of their, um, their Instagram lives or, or yeah, it was not, Instagram live that they had gotten a shipment of, um, of yarn in from hedgehog fibers. And one of the colorways was budgie. And of course, if you all know, Skylar, our uh, our our bird, is a budgie or a parakeet who is living the best life. By the way, oh, he, he really a, is. He got a new cage. He is so happy. He's bobbing his head. He talks to us all the time. It's great. So, um, this is the colorway budgie. It's by Hedgehog Fibers, and it is uh, it is their sock yarn. Hundred percent. Oh, I'm sorry. Ninety percent merino, ten percent nylon. Made in Ireland land of my birth. So I was like, you know what? This is a, one of those skeins where you buy just because it's so pretty and it has like, and then sometimes it just sits on our shelf. Most of the time it sits on our shelf. So I decided, you know what? Let me, let's just crank it. So we, I cranked, <laughs> uh, I cranked a tube. So I split the tube up um, and I wanted to see what it, how it came out. And then I'm going to turn these into socks. So this is the budgie colorway. It actually has a lot of his colors. It has a lot of his colors. Because his main colors, well, mainly he's white with yeah. some blue and some that blues. like chartreuse green in it yeah. and some black. Yep. So I did two. Um, I basically, what I did was I, for those of you who have a sock machine, the way oh, wait. I did it. Well, you didn't do the hung hem. No, I tried to do a hung hem, but I I messed it up. And I okay. threw out my back putting up, putting away the lawnmower. Um, not too long ago, so I had a hard time sitting in front of the the sock machine yeah. for a long time. So I was like, let's just crank, let, yeah, let's just crank it. That'll be my new catchphrase. Um, so anyway, I did some waste yarn, and I knit um, half of the skein, fifty grams, and then I did more waste yarn, and then I did the other fifty, just so that it would be even, and I can just turn these into um, into socks. One of the things that I need to do, and we're still learning, obviously, is I do have to pull out. Um, probably about two inches or so. And then I'm just going to use that to knit the the cuff and I'm going to find a contrast or a cool, yeah, a contrasting color to do the heels and toes. So this nice. is a transition to a whip. It's kind of a whip. Well, but I yeah. just, you know, 
I did work on it. True. Yeah, but I love the colors. I thought they were they're really cute, and it it very much looks like Skyler. Yeah, it's a very pretty color. Yeah. So that's Good what job. we're gonna start doing from now on. You know, when we have those really pretty yarns that may not work in a shawl or something like that. So it's funny. I don't know if Taylor's still here, but one of my purchases yesterday is actually a Taylor from Wool Needles Hands enabled me because I've seen the item, I think a smaller version of it on her um, channel quite a bit. And I feel like I've seen it recently and that's why I bought it. So we'll show that in a little bit. Okay. But I just thought of that because I picked this up kind of. So my first whip is living in my Matterroot bag that we got from Maryland. Mm, I know. I love these bags so much. They are so easy. Like when we were in the city, um, we just clipped our bags like right to our Delic or book bag. And it just like hangs out there. So you don't have to worry about packing it in a bag. Oh, Taylor's here. Taylor's here. So Taylor has a bag that she likes and I saw it in person and I bought one. So first what, up, wait, is, that did not, you just completely are leaving everybody high and dry. I know. So you'll have to watch the end. So this is the Kirby cardigan <laughs> that I had to print out because it's no longer working in good notes for whatever reason on Apple devices. I think it's the font. It's, it's not be. recognizing the font. Anymore. So I finished the body yesterday oh gosh, morning. So cute. I just didn't have the pattern with me to pick up the sleeves and work on them. So that's all that's left. Just sleeves. And, oh, I don't have, do you have the buttons? I got them at Skein. I do. I didn't know where they came from, to be honest. Yeah, with you. I got them from Skein. So this is literally Wait. my oh. new favorite pattern for a little girl sweater. I just think it's adorable. There's three buttonholes. This is out of the Barocco Remix Light. And I love this color. It's like an, almost like a terracotta, I would say. This is the... I want to say 18 month. I know she's only a year old today, but I figured it'd be best to do a larger size. So I did size five, which is an 18 month. It goes up to 24 months. So it has three, six, nine, 12, 18, 24. They're not these, right? No, they were loose. They're three. They're the little white flowers. They were loose? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Shh, Kevin, don't, don't start. <laughs> oh, I found him. Thank you. So I Guys, got it's some... It's really bad over here. <laughs> it's like a weather. It's really bad. So these are the buttons that I purchased to go on them or on the sweater. Look. They're little, really cute. Just some little cute white flowers. That's going to look so nice yeah. against this. Little... I think it's going to be cute with that. Yeah. This, this fabric, honest to God. I know. It's, it's, it's so a nice. really great. I know I've said it before. It's a DK weight. It's recycled fibers. It's four, 13 to $14 for a skein of it. And you get over 400 yards of DK for $14. So I think it's pretty decently priced yeah. to get a good washable garment out of for kids. Because mm -hmm. it does say that you can machine wash, but lay flat to dry. Yeah. So that is a pattern by Barocco. You can get it on Ravelry or directly from their site. And I want to say it's like 6 to $7. Um, and I love it. It's my second one now. Anytime I need to make one, I might just... That and the anchor and the baby vertebrae might be my go-to like go baby sweaters. Yeah. They were all really cute to um, knit and work on. I have a baby project coming up that is going to be a little bit complicated. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, for uh, mom to be at our um, our knitting group. So more to come on that. I've got to order the yarn, and uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be an adventure. We'll just say that. Um, okay, me again. Yeah, you're up. Okay, I will just show this again. This is again our the wonderful matter root bag. That's amazing. I did some. I was able to do some train knitting oh. last night. Um, and then some hotel knitting and we weren't able to knit on the subway, obviously, cause we were standing the entire time up against everybody. I don't remember where exactly I was, but I haven't picked this up in a while. It's just my stockinette project. This is going to be the sock head slouch by Kelly McClure. Um, and so I think I was probably somewhere like down here ish. 
So I did a good three inches or so, maybe four inches. And this yarn is Jody Long. Um, I don't know if I have the tag in here because I was trying to condense. Do I have it here? Yeah, I was trying to condense a little bit because um, we tend to overpack a lot. Not that a tag would have taken up so much space, but I don't have it. I apologize. It's the colorway I believe is called Earth, and it's a really cool, like, tweedy yarn. Um, it's a sport weight, I believe, fingering to sport weight. It's got really fun color neps in there that's working up really, really well. It's for those of you who re who don't re or who watch the podcast and remember, it's hard to show it, but it's almost it's rustic, but very, very soft at the same time. There is some animal, not animal matter, plant matter in you here. You did that last time. I too. did that too. I know. Can you imagine? So anyway, I'm doing the size medium. So it's a free pattern. You cast on 140. I cast on 144 stitches. I did four inches of a two by two rib. And then it's just stocking it um, straight on through. I believe I have to do like, I do usually six to seven inches. And then I start my decreases. I like a more slouchy hat. And so I think that this will be, um, this will be really nice for the winter time. This yarn is very reminiscent of Look how, Roman. I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah. Rowan felt a tweed. Yeah. It, somebody had mentioned that, and I agree a ton that it yeah. um, does. So, and I'm just going to say good morning to Keisha. Good morning to Jay. Good morning to good Moogie. Good morning. Is that Moogie Moogie? Good morning. I've never seen the name Moogie before. Hi, Hope. Look, it yeah. says Moogie M. Hi, Hope. Hi. Do you think that that's not that might Moogie be, Moogie? Is it our Moogie? Is it Moogie Moogie? Are you our Moogie? Um, anyway, I, I wish I remember the the... The base of the yarn. If anybody can remember, okay. um, please let me know. I'm surprised that I don't have the tag. Usually I'm really good with that. but And I don't have mine anywhere around that I see. It's okay. All right. So anyway, so that's that. And I am I wanted to try. This is what we got the first time we went to skiing. We stopped at um, Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl shop, Yarn Shop and saw this. And I wanted to cast something on for that trip. And I also got the uh, Licky, Licky Needles, Licky Needles to try. It's actually a really great combination with this yarn. I'm, I'm very impressed with that. It's a very, very smooth, um, smooth join, fixed circular needles. Mm, that's Hello, much, Gail. That's pretty much what I've been from doing. From Florida. Hello. Um, John, we are just waiting for another food box to arrive. If it comes, we'll do one. Yeah. But that's all we're waiting on. We were contacted by them. They do yeah. want to send us another box, so that'll be great. All right, so, so that's that. Last whip, you guys have seen this a ton. I'm almost done, tired of talking about it. So hopefully it'll be done soon. But this is my his home office, and as you can see, the seaming has started. Yeah, it's the so sleeves good. are attached. I think I did a pretty good job on the seaming, with the exception of like right here. This puckers a little bit, so I don't know if I'm gonna have to like. I'll probably just have to steam it out or something, mm -hmm. or block it out. But so shoulders are fully attached. I just need to do the um, seam the sleeves. So I have my little clips on here. So I can seam them. Um, Kate was very helpful with helping me do the saddle shoulder. Where did you get these clips from? These clips are my clips because I thought one day I was going to be a sewist. Oh, yeah. So I have a bunch of sewing supplies, which now cool. have become very helpful. So if you buy something... Don't feel bad because you're never, you never Don't know. Don't feel when, bad. You never things. know when you're going to use it. So right. these I bought on a whim because I thought I was going to sew stuff. Clearly I'm not, but they came in handy. And had I not, I would have never had them. And then I would have had to buy them anyways. So this is the. This is going to be gorgeous. His it's home office gorgeous. by Knit Spot, also known as Bare Naked Wolves. Yes. This is knit out of their Stone Soup DK, which literally has everything in it. I know. And I've tried it on. It's going to fit very well. It looks like um, my V is going to be very deep. That's nice. I like a deep V. <laughs> but I'm sure, obviously, I'll pick up the collar and knit about an inch and a half to two inches, I think, around. So that's is that the plan is to finish it, like literally finish the seaming this week. I have to, 
actually take the time. I have so many strings on this too. And sit at the dining room table, clear everything out and just not have any uh, disruptions and do it. Mm -hmm. You, I came home from work and you were sitting at the dining room table doing it. And I was like, oh, this is great. He's going to finish it. And then. No, it took quite a while. Apparently I'm a disruption. It took, absolutely. Whatever. Fine. No, it took a long time to, um, to do. I actually was like messed up and I was using the wrong strand of yarn. I took it out a couple times. Austin, it's your birthday? Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Woot woot. So that, that's all my whips. Okay. I have two more things to show. Wow. Let you had three. I changed my mind. I just I keep finding things. Look at this the mesh over here. I was gonna swear. Oh my god! If I fall, imagine. I would laugh. I know you would, and I would <laughs> not. Okay, so let's go into crochet real quick. Ra well, Rachel, only two that I'm working on. Oh yeah, I no, have Kevin has many more, yeah. many more downstairs right. that feel neglected yeah um but we'll get there okay i um if you all remember i started using some of kevin's experimental um dye like minis that after he was done you know uh done with them to do a crochet granny stripe blanket i was struggling a little bit with the ends like at the end of each row, because you have to do something different every other row in order to keep that pattern of alternating, you know, the triple stitches like below and, and I'll show you. So I decided that we're going to move on from this blanket. This is going to be turned into a scarf, like a, a nice thin scarf, which I think will be really fun to add to the, um, add to our gift basket for like the holidays time. So if you can see like the, the grant, the way the granny stripes work is it's, it alternates. So at the start and the end of every row, you have to do, you've got to do something different. I kept getting confused. Yeah. Um, be especially because I, there's only enough yarn to do just one stripe. So it's not like I could go back and forth and kind of keep that, um, keep that going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a border to this. And then I'm going to call it done and it'll be a nice, you know, a nice little scarf, maybe for like, you know, the niece or nephew or something like that. Yeah. For Reese. For Reese. Yeah. I think that would be really cute for her. Right. For her birthday. Oh, great idea. Right. Cause her birthday. It's super and colorful. Christ yeah. Her birthday yeah. and Christmas are both in December. So it'd be a great, um, great for her. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I put one more stripe on it and then kind of just was like, you know what? Um, this is where I was. And then so I just added one more color. So that's what I'm going to do. So now, instead of doing the granny stripes, I decided to do um, granny squares. And because I don't know when this is going to end, like Kevin's, you know, testing the colors and all of that. And I've got a, a whole bunch you have of a whole minis bunch. that I need to work through. So this is much more portable. And I think it's just easier um to get around and i've never seemed granny squares together and some of those they look really nice and i thought it would be fun to do them um in single colors so that's what i did so i i've got three of them four of them done and this is what i'm going to be working on so this is a granny square single color granny square um super you know super easy to do i did a magic ring in the middle um, and then I went around in the, you know, in the circle and what I did for these, I found a, um, I found a technique for a seamless granny square. So you basically are, um, doing some really cool things and I'll, if I'll see if I can find the video, I'll link it down below. You do a really cool thing on like uh, where the join is, where you're slipping your stitches and stuff. So this is one square. I have another square done. These colors are gorgeous. I don't even know what that color is. Actually, no, I don't know what that is. Um, I did uh, this one. That one I think is ghost water. That one's one of my favorites. And then this one I just did this morning. That one I don't know what it is either. Yeah. So my plan is, you know, we'll get a, a big collection of them, but I really like the idea of the solid. Like, I think that could look really neat. 
And what cut? And maybe like a gray. I was thinking either a gray or an undyed, like yeah. maybe a skein of your undyed. Maybe. Um, in between them, or I could just, or I could just seam them together. And I'm sorry, I missed this. Are you holding double or single? Nope, just okay. single, just single. And it gets, it's just enough because the the skein, the uh, the minis that I have are ten grams, ten grams, about ten grams. With some with some left over. Yeah, and it's not making a dense no, fabric. It's There's very a lot light. of stretch in this. So that's yeah. really nice. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. All right. Good yep. job. Yep. And then that's my crochet project. All right. And now this one is the one that I'm like super, super oh, stoked I'm about. I was trying to think what the other one is. Yeah. I've been I this is the one that's been getting the majority of my love. And this is um, the House of Diamonds sweater by Maxim Sear. Let me see if I can pull up the pattern. I'm sure you all have seen this. I've been working on this for a little while. Um, go back to patterns, sweaters, House of Diamonds. This is the House of Diamonds sweater. And I made a lot of progress, right? So last you saw it, I think I had one sleeve done. So I finished the second sleeve, and I'll show you the whole thing. Let's get out of the way for you. Up right now. I'm really loving this. I, I love how this looks. This is the front of the sweater. So it's um, a beautiful folded over collar. Um, it's got really great, like th almost uh, three dimensional, yeah, you know, color work there. It was a lot of work with the holding the three colors, trying to carry the three colors. Max loves him. <laughs> no, oh, he no, knows him. He's, he's, I know him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, but I think it's way worth it. I cannot wait to steam this or block this. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to do um, to have everything bloom fully. I would, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I did the pattern calls for a really long uh, cuff, so you can do it shorter if you wanted to. But I, um, I'm following the pattern, so I did a four inch cuff. Um, got really fun detail along the the wrist there, and so the 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 sweater is going to come down to like about here or so on me, which is really great. I can roll up the sleeves or pull them down. Um, the yarn is fantastic. This is, um, the British DK by Le Garçon. It is in the colors natural. This is Moira's black rose and this one's Minnie's wheat. So these are my colors. So now all I've got to do is the body. And then in the pattern, the, the, um, hem is also double. Oh, like okay. this. Which could be really cool. I think it nice. is. I didn't I, I thought I read ahead a little bit, but so I have a few more inches still to go uh with the body, and then I'll be doing the hem. So I'm hoping that this will be done relatively soon, if not definitely by Woolen Folk and Rhinebeck. And I, my plan is to wear this on Friday. Yeah. So I can but yeah, but that's what I have. So I did the second sleeve, and then what I find really easy now that the sleeves are done is I pull them, I pull them inside. Yes. So I don't have to worry about all this extra like fabric flapping. I don't remember where we saw that. I'm not sure either. It could be Nancy. Nancy may have done Maybe. it or somebody else did it. It was, we watched somebody who did it. Yeah. So I just pull the sleeves inside and, um, and I just knit, you know, knitting around that way. It makes it a lot easier when it's on my lap or whatnot, but I'm loving this base. I believe it's, um, BFL and, um, Masham. Masham. Some yeah, 75% BFL wool, 25% Masham. It's a non-superwash. And it's, like I said, it's in DK. So I had, I was a little bit nervous that I wasn't going to have enough yarn to do the four inches of the cuff on both sleeves, plus that little bit of color work in the band. But I had plenty. So I had one skein of the natural, one skein of the mini's wheat, which I have a ton left over. So I'm going to do something with these. And then... um I got a few skeins of the of the black, so I'm not worried about that. But I have plenty 
I still have plenty left over. And Vincent's smart. So he cheated when he did his. He did the first part in Twisted Rib and then the inside of Stocknet. I stitch. remember him saying that, so on, that... The, on the podcast. So I may cheat. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's my sweater. <laughs> I'm done. Um... <laughs> All right. So we have. <laughs> Those are my projects. I'll post. Woohoo. So first up, we have other stuff over there that's all post, right? Um, the um, flax and pine is in one of the bags. Yeah. So this, this just came in the mail, like, oh, right before we left. So this was um, Mark, I believe, was inspired by our... The bag. Bag with uh, Betty White. Yeah. Or Rose Nyland giving us the finger. So we got this. This is a nice little Halloween magnet. I love it. It's on our fridge. We just took it off our yeah, fridge. Yeah, we just to took it off the fridge. So we're going to bring it back down and throw it on the fridge. Yeah. Oh, ads again. No way. We shut them off. But yeah, very cute. So thank Guys, you, Mark. I'm really sorry. Yeah, there's not much we can um, yeah. we could do about that. So. All right. And then. Oh, we were right, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we did good. Okay. So I made a, I mean, I, this is a acquisition slash um, owl posts, really amazing people. So during the last um, podcast, if you had seen, I bought a bag and I was waiting and waiting, and waiting. And I, I think I was one of the first to buy them because I just couldn't wait. So this is the hide and hammer number 10 special edition uh Legra Son bag in their in collaboration with them. My sweater is living in here. This is humongous and I could use this as um like a travel bag as well. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. But it has the wax canvas design in there that um our other bags have like the other bags have on the outside. This yeah. is on the inside. I forget the name of that other bag that we have. Uh the number 7? I don't know. Number 3. There are uh, large, there's one large pocket in here. There, is, and there are three smaller pocket's in here. And then there's the later song tag. Yes. It <laughs> you, yeah, it's, it's really great. So um, Rachel said, I'll hold your Rhinebeck yarn. So you bring it to Rhinebeck. Oh, that's a great idea. Retreat bag, yes. Yes. That's the other bag that we have yeah. with the fabric on the outside. So I like this too, because it does clip. Um, you know, clip closed, snap closed. So, you know, the gents over there um, are, first of all, amazing. I know. Um, and second, are so generous. Then they're so excited about this yarn that um, they wanted to share it with us as well. This is their fluff that they did in collaboration with Wolcott Yarns. And I'm sure you've seen this, but it's absolutely stunning. It is uh, sport weight. It's 55% uh, baby alpaca, 18% fine merino wool, 17% mulberry silk, 10% yak, and 100% dreamy. And it's absolutely stunning. It's their it's fluff. So um, if you don't watch their podcast, you totally should. And um, they've been talking about using this um, instead of holding, because a lot of a lot of projects now are calling for fua fua, which is fantastic. However, Fua Fua is a pretty expensive um, it, It's yarn. a luxury yarn. It's a luxury yarn. So, and in in those patterns, you hold a strand of that double. So it's a it's about a, a lace weight-ish, lace to fingering weight. So this is sport weight. So instead of holding two strands of Fua Fua together, you can just hold one strand of the fluff. I know. And it is absolutely amazing. It's so soft and squishy and um we saw these at we saw at brooklyn general and we had them in our hands and it's funny because we had like the same colors well we of, tried to figure out yeah. what we had we forgot right um so this one i, I apologize this one is called uh boreal i'm just kidding boreal i'm not sure if that's and this right is glacial not. depths i think they sent us the ones in english so we could say them properly and not butcher them yeah but that's not english correct but anywho, so and I sold some yesterday at Brooklyn General. 
Yeah. People are looking to make moon bumps. So I was like, okay, well, I think you should get um, some fluff mm -hmm. and buy two skeins of fluff. And I help them pick out their spin cycle to go with it. Yeah. Kevin was your um, your salesperson. Yeah. From, uh, so I saw out of New York City. At least four skeins yesterday while I was at Brooklyn General. <laughs> yeah. And um, there's a pattern that I think. Oh, we need to switch so we match. Okay. So there is a pattern that we saw while we were there that is actually knit in a sport weight, but not like a fluffy one that this could be an option for. So I may use it for that later. Yeah. Okay, you an affiliate link here. <laughs> so, so thank you guys very much. Yes. That was really, really sweet. I'm really happy. Um, I know. I may make that pattern with this also. The one that will show. Yeah, we'll have another. We have a lot to talk about. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know. And we have. Oh, it's we have plenty of time. Yeah, we've only been on plenty for an hour. of time, darling. And then is that? Oh, the. I mean, we have this, which was a super nice gift. And I don't think all of it's in there. One of them fell out. I know. Oh, it did. Yeah, something fell out, and it's downstairs. Oh, in my bag. Paula from Mayak is just such a generous, generous, kind soul. It was so nice to spend so much time with her yesterday. I feel yeah. like we don't ever get a chance to spend time in person when we're at these events and stuff. It's just more like a hello, hugs, and like quick chit chat. Um, but yesterday was really sweet to spend a lot of time with her. And she brought us um, a little gift. She has a really cool, um, a really cool thing on her site, a uh, line of yarn not really line of yarn, but uh, like pack ups, um, focusing on the Tibetan Zodiac, which is super cool. And you get a bag, uh, stickers, a really cool, um, like art inspired. I'll show you in a second. postcard postcard. And then you get a yarn, uh, based off of that, you know, that picture. So she had asked us what our Zodiac signs were for the Tibetan and so Kevin's is here. You want to, this is really yours. I'm okay. a monkey. You're a monkey. Oh, I was born in 1980. So I'm the year of the monkey. It's actually interesting because it kind of coincides with the Chinese Zodiac, but they're just a little bit different. Yes. So I am the monkey. Which and so you can get Paula. these. Yeah. And you can get these on her, um, on my act site and like depending find out what your zodiac animal is or if you want to rep a different animal because you love it then go for it. Yeah, so this is the little canvas tote monkey on a vespa cuz Paula has a vespa. Oh, Tracy Miller having her Hello, Sunday Tracy. coffee. Hello. And then this is the um So here's the little like postcard artwork for it. And then this is on the Tibetan cloud base. This is oh, it's dandelion. So it's a really lovely yeah. yellow and it almost has like this green undertone to it. It's really beautiful. And we saw a really nice hat pattern. Yeah. At uh, Mayak's trunk show yesterday at Brooklyn General that had some cable details right at the top for the decreases. It was really, really pretty. And the designer's Olga, and I don't know the last name. But you know who else we got to meet while we were there? Olga. We did. Who we is Gotham Knits. Gotham Knits. Yeah. So we got to see her yesterday as well. So this was is a beautiful color. I yeah. did my Oslo hat out of the Tibetan cloud. And I love this yarn. It um, blocks beautifully. It's super, mm -hmm. super soft. She had a lot of samples knit with this. A beautiful sweater. And I am the year of the, ca uh, the rooster. So this is. You're a bird. I'm a bird. The year of the bird. So this is the uh, inspiration piece, and this is the yarn. That's a beautiful it's color. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. It's like a cornflower blue. It's, it's called stunning. Stone Blue. Um, it's absolutely stunning. So there's, uh, you know, get that. you didn't need Could to. You try it? No. And then here's the actual tote. Here's yeah. a large tote with the Vespa, the monkey on the Vespa. So adorable. So adorable. So anyway, that was another um, gift, which was so, so sweet of her. Her yarn is absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you haven't tried it, you know, definitely treat yourself. They are definitely treat yourself yarns. Yeah. Um, but it's so worth it. You know, it's so worth it in the end. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it yeah. really is. It's a beautiful base. We yeah. also, you know, we just finished our Hohe Knits with the 50% yak and the 50% silk. And that's another lovely, lovely yarn. We saw one when we were there too. That was... 
it was cotton in something, right? Oh, yeah. It was like in the back when we were at the store. So, yeah, definitely check out my yak. Hat. It had to be yak, right? She uses yeah. yak and everything. So baby yak and cotton, maybe? That was an interesting blend. Yeah, super cool. Very nice spaces. Yeah. And then next up is the um, Fox and Pine stuff. You caught what I almost said? Yeah. Um, okay, he's rude. so I know. So this is kind of out of order. but His mother's going to wash his mouth out. With I soap. didn't say it. All right, we'll go kind of quickly with these because this is this is the most your darn Swizzies. Love the gnome. I actually I love, love this the... color palette. Me too. Pink for Christmas. Coffee and candy cane and snowflakes. Then you have your DPN holders in this same fabric. Mm-hmm. Um, then there are some really fun. Um she has uh ornaments now for your tree. Yes. Which is so cool. Hold on, there was a there was another Here, there's a third one I thought. Right there. Where? Here. Oh. Look how fun. Aren't they amazing to hang them on your tree? Right? They're so, so cute. So good. Or is that a magnet as well? And it comes with a hook on the back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They are absolutely adorable. She's got a, a bunch. Yeah, these are really ones. cute. They're super, super cute. I love this little sheep. I know. With the Santa hat. And then um, then there's some. You have yeah, some like are... kind of matching stitch stopper. So here goes this, the same sheep just without the hat. That's so cute. Look at this. Mini. Um, and then there are, these are tags that you can knit into your um, or uh, you know, sew into your sweaters or your projects. The first one, are the, this is I thought was really, really cute. Little llamas or alpacas. They're super cute. And look, these go with this ornament kind of. Yeah, you're so smart. That's what I'm here for. You're so smart. This one's my favorite. This one's probably my favorite. So, so somebody's saying that the sound is choppy and your video is pixelated. So it may be your internet connection. Yeah, so might be your internet You connection. may just have to reload. Yeah. Because um, nothing's changed, it looks like, on our end. Or is, I don't know if it's our internet. We have pretty strong internet connection. I love this one. Um, Closing and reopening fixed it. Awesome. Close and reopen. No, sorry. So I love the buffalo plaid. And um, is our internet awful? No. We have full bars. Yeah, I'm full. So there's this one. We have some gnomes. It seems it seems to be like if you guys close and restart or just hit refresh, it should yeah, be okay. Yeah. Now we're clear again. I Great. Know. These are my favorite. Oh, that's a cute. Little ugly sweater, right? Super cute. And then some gingerbread men. Yeah. So very cute. That was Thank amazing. You, Tara. Oh, and a fun little um like notion. Notions. Or you can put all your little that's all genius. your little stitch stoppers right in here. So, genius yeah i love um there were just so many great stitch stoppers yeah so thank you very much tara we appreciate it and then i think now we're on to the portion of we spent a heck of a lot at we broke the bank we lost control but we got some really great things out of the deal all right so let's start with skein shop okay so i'm just gonna start you know, pulling some things out and we can talk about them as, you know, as we go. What was nice, I think, about the purchases that we've made over the last two weeks is that we really looked for stuff that we... We were intentional. Yeah, yarns that we haven't used before. Yeah. Because I think that's one of the fun parts about going to a, a... Whether it's a yarn store or a festival is that you get to see things and touch things that you haven't seen before. And try to find ways to work with some of these new things. <laughs> Naomi likes to put candy in her uh, notions pouches. I support that idea. Agree. fully, hundred percent. So, so um, we went there specifically for the, well, for the red stag fiber uh, trunk show. And we had two skeins of red stag fiber um, 
in our trash. Yes. And I'm missing this game. It's a dark one. Oh, the are these mine? No, please stop reaching over me. <laughs> so I made these are mine. Some purchases while we were there. This is new know. yarn to skein. And I haven't seen this before. I think it's a new yarn in general. This is from Eastaker. And this is their Eco Baby. Yes. So these are 50 gram balls of yarn. It's 68% alpaca in 32% organic cotton. And this is a chainette construction. It's super, super soft. Like, and I love the natural color for it of it and the marled look. So I think this is just going to be a really nice fun yarn to knit with. Um, I can't wait to kind of see what happens with it because it is really, really, really soft. So you have the, you know, you have the alpaca, which yes. is naturally soft, and then you have the cotton, which is soft, but then we'll give it a little bit strength because it doesn't have that, um, that stretch, mm -hmm. the natural stretch that wool does. And then I also got two skeins of their Eco Soft. So it's the same blend. It's just the yarns made differently. This is more of like a fluff construction or like a fua fua where it looks like there's a thread and then you have all the fuzziness on the outside. It's really nice. And this is in color E4S. Yes. So I got two skeins of that. This is 50 grams as well, and you get 125 meters. Okay. And then um, I'm not quite sure. Was it this one? I don't know. I don't remember now. So, but I purchased um, antique leather from Red Stag Fibers. Uh, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. Okay. Because I said, I apologize, you already had your own member and I bought the oh. the second one. I needed to get your permission. And I even said to Robin, Kevin's going to hate me because I'm getting the same one. So I purchased Antique Leather, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is a 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I also purchased Pine. Which I really, my colorblindness, um, I thought it was green, but it's not. It's like a, a, a woodsy color. Oh, Ecosoft and Unha. Mm. Then I also purchased Robin, which I think is absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful color. There weren't many left. No. When we were there. I needed to get that right away. That's on the, uh, his cottage sock base. Again, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I bought these two to go with the two other skeins um, that Josh had sent to us a while ago. And I can't remember. One of the colors was this. Yep. And then the other one, I believe, was a darker color. Because this one wasn't mine, was it? No. So I don't know where the, those are. But there's one more skein floating around someplace. It has the stitch marker on it. Um, maybe we'll come across it someplace. Or it might be downstairs. I don't know. But this was... The intention is to potentially put these together for the Stephen West MCAL if I decide to do that. So I'm not going to jump right on and cast on with everybody else. I'll probably cast on later. But at least I'll have the yarn for it. There is one more and it's a darker... It's a very dark, like, green, I think, color. Which I think these will look really nice there. Right. Um, that is... That's so that's I didn't get a lot there. I was really good. Yeah, I only put uh bought two things. I know those are gorgeous. I bought Old Town and I figured this could go with the other two skeins that I received from Josh, which was um this one, I believe, an antique heather or antique leather, which I just love that like whiskey color of it. So this has a little bit of that kind of gray undertone or taupe in it yeah. and the nice beige. So it will play really well with those two colors. And then this I saw, and this is on the DK base and it's a beautiful brick red and hence the name Brick Tavern. Yes. So I just love this color. I like the, the tonality in it. 
And he just has really beautiful yarn. And what I thought too was we didn't purchase any, but he had a really nice, I think it was a worsted base that was non-super wash. Yeah, it was really cool. It was cool. Peruvian wool, mm -hmm. 100% Peruvian wool. So the skeins, those were cheaper than um, other super wash or non-super wash bases. They were like $23 for a skein of worsted weight, non-super wash, or yeah, non-super wash yarn. Yeah. I really don't know where that ended up going, but um, you'll see that coming up at some point. <laughs> and then, so that so was we, our skein. That was skein. We also, in the meantime, got um, the, we didn't? No, we did. I'm just shaking our head at the ridiculousness I know. of this. I know. Um, we got the next installment of the Woolens and Nosh Mystery Sock Club kit or yeah and um i'm sure a lot of people have been showing this and it's absolutely so good it's everything really is so good that she does this is the september 2023 yarn club it's october 1st so you should have already gotten yours and the colorway is called 80s summer mixtape oh. It's really good. And she has shown a picture on Insta. I'll see if I can find it real quick. It's so good. Of what it looks like knit up, which I appreciate that she does Me too. it. She does it pretty quickly too. Yeah. So it's nice because then we get to um ones yeah. and gosh. Um okay. Hey, we're plowing through this. This is good. So here is how the socks knit up. Beautiful. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show. This is this is now our haul from yesterday. And this purchase I'm about to show is Taylor's fault because she has spoken of a bag very similar to this. And I've seen it. Don't you love when you can blame other people for it? I know. Your, and your I own. wanted it. Oh, this, this is a Magner bag. It's wax canvas and it's like this sage green, which I'm kind of loving a sage green right now. And it reminds me, very into it's a cross well. between the bag that I got from Paradise Island and um, my fringe supply bag. Yeah. So nice. Hearty. With a little delicate wax canvas mixed in, mixed in. Right, nice hearty. It has your three grommets on the inside, right here. I don't know how to show this. There's did, three of them it. and a pouch. Then you got a zipper in here, and then some spots to put your stuff. There you go. And it has a drawstring. And these are the types of bags that the more that you use them, the more supple and soft they become. Yeah, they'll get all patinaed and fun yeah. looking. So I saw that. I've seen it. Taylor has shown it multiple times. And I was like, oh, it's a really pretty bag. And seeing them in person, I thought, okay, let's do it. So like Kevin said, we were pretty intentional um, with projects. And... Oh, I'm huh. going to pull up that pattern. Your, your pile was a little bit larger than mine, mister. <laughs> By... Ooh, two items. Mm, <laughs> negative. You are so Three, dramatic. Four, five, six, seven, eight things you got. Please go, Susan Lucci. I got five things. Hmm. But we don't keep track of those things. Go. go. Okay. Have so a Snickers. One of the I actually would love a Snickers. I'm very hungry. One of the things that we saw, um, and again, we've said this before, going to these different yarn shops, um, you get to see different types of yarn that you don't see anywhere else and i've never seen this yarn before and i, I loved it and it reminded me a little bit of um of the uh, moda yarn yeah. that i got yeah um so this is ulysses it is a 100 percent wool 185 meters per 50 grams so it's it's about a sport weight ish i would say somewhere around there use uh recommended three to three and a half millimeter needle so maybe a dk um i got the colorway lagoon and you got oh gosh i don't know 
how what how do you say that? That's another boule, boule, uh, boulou, boulou or boule. I don't know. So yeah, I got the same thing. It's super soft. Yeah. Um. So it's final... really cool. It's got. It's going to be hard to see, but there's different variations of some color in there. Um. It's it's coming across a little bit too blended, more blended on the camera, but um, it there's some like different variations of the blues there might be a little splash of yellow in here or something max knit his bolt sweater with it and said no it's way. amazing it's light and airy yeah it's i love the the ply on it me too so mine's just a really nice almost natural and there's some gray some gray bits in there yeah and uh, mm -hmm. mine is going to be what is it bulo bulo okay bolo it's what he know. said that's what, that's what he said. Mine is going to be a cool Haas um, by Jared Flood. I think this would be really cool. It'll pick up the cables really nicely. Mm -hmm. The first one that I did was too small, and I think you lost the cables in the dark yarn that I used. I used like a cast iron colorway, I yeah. think it was called, from uh, from Brooklyn Tweed. So I think this will look really cool um, as a uh, as a cool Haas. I think you should wear it just like that. I went, Maybe I'll just wear it like yeah. this. Yeah, or maybe like this, and throw a horn on the end of it. Oh, there you go. No, that's bad. Oh my gosh, why did I just do that? At least they weren't side by side. So that was um, that one. And then I picked up some knitting for Olive. Yeah, they're heavy merino and slate gray. It's a hundred percent merino. This is going to be um, a cable hat for sure. Yep, I think that'll look really nice. And I've never seen knitting for Olive in person before. So yeah, it was we saw cool that, to pick, see up that. Every, uh, pick up every stitch carries knitting for all. Oh, okay. I've just never worked with it. So and I like um, this nice dark gray color or slate color. So I think mm. it will be a nice fun um, cabled hat. And then our last purchase there, we both kind of put together a kit. So while we were at Brooklyn General, there was a designer there having a trunk show. I personally haven't seen any of her patterns. I haven't either. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say that. So this is Tori Yu. She's so pretty. And she had this cowl there. It's the Curiosity cowl. It is knit with sport weight yarn. So mm -hmm. it takes, I want to say it's like 220 to 240 yards of two different yarns. She used Moondrake, um, sport, and then she also used Spin Cycle with it. So we were searching for some yarn. I saw that. I said I would like to make it because it is we both like she had she had a little like Kevin said a little trunk like, show there too so she showed some of her patterns. So it's a bandana style. It has a drawstring. So I think it's going to be really really nice. It looks incredibly wearable. So for somebody who doesn't like a shawl, this yeah. is a really good option to keep your neck warm. I just, I, I I really just loved it. So I picked up um, Moondrake Sage, and, and this is the Cormo Sport. And I picked up the same base uh, in the Blue Sage colorway. Isn't that? Those are pretty together. Yeah. We're going to look so cute together. I'm not wearing mine when you wear it. Yes, yours. you are. No, nope. wearing them together. No. Yep. And then I picked up some Spin Cycle. This is called Wola. <laughs> I read this so wrong yesterday. I was like, oh, it's wool, woolo. No. Wololo. Well, it's wololo. Wool only lives once. Wool. So, I don't know what the this is going to be my spin cycle that I hold wool, with wool, this wool, 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 wool. to um, make that cow. I thought it was going to, I really like the way that the orange, when that comes, is going to play with the blue. You have some blue in here, some like beiges. Not some like browns. There was some, there were a couple skeins that actually had some purples in it. Yeah, there's a little bit of purple. This has a little more blue and gray. I think it's going to be fantastic. I agree. And the name of the pattern is called the Curiosity, Curiosity Cowl. Cowl. Here you go. By Tori Yu. Yep. She was it's a actually, fun, like textured. I don't know if it's a seed stitch or something. It's not seed stitch. It's a broke. I think it's broken seed stitch. Okay. Because I, I did ask her. 
Um, and then she had this on yesterday, and it is knit out of Brooklyn Tweed, I believe, right? Yeah, Brooklyn Tweed and Bue. She was wearing that this. That Bue is really pretty. And it was beautiful. This is called the Manhattan Vest. She had this on yesterday. It was stunning in person. Yeah. Bye, Taylor. Have Bye. Have fun with breakfast. Have a good day. Oh, I would so like some breakfast. Definitely check out Tori Yu's patterns. Uh, again, we had not... Um, I don't know that I had seen any of her patterns prior to being at Brooklyn General yesterday, but she had some hats and some sweaters. Yes. Uh, a bunch of stuff. So I would highly recommend checking those out. And I decided to go with like blues and grays. It's going to be so beautiful. I think this is going to be stunning. And I've never worked with spin cycle before. And I was kind of having a little FOMO um, that Kevin's used it a few times. So I thought we were kind of picking them together and I was torn between two different colorways. One of them had like peach peaches and yeah, pinks and stuff, yep. which I thought would look nice, but I really think this is going to look fantastic um, in that, um, in that cowl and very wearable for me. Yeah. You know, with the colors, I think it'll be very wearable. So right in my wheelhouse, um, yeah, this is the colorway leaf out like spelled like Keith, but with an L L E I T H leaf. I think Wraith. it's going to be, that's going to be a beautiful combo. Yeah. So I'm really excited. The, the, uh, the spin cycle now, interesting, you know, we talk about this a lot with, um, with spin cycle or we hear a lot of people talk about how, you know, you can get the same colorway, but they can be very, very different. And it was very true there, trying to find two, two of the skeins to match. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit tricky. So uh, these are great. So I think this is going to be, you know, wonderful. And um, it was really fun. They have a lot of spin cycle. So it this is. is spin cycle dyed in the wool. And it's, there's, it's uh, 200, 200 yards sport weight. And you need just over that yeah. to make that cow, like literally just over a skein. So if you have a color already in your stash that you have some leftover of, and you want to use that, then all you would have to do is pick up a different skein. You can also use something like a Noro mm -hmm. or a Chrome. Is it Chroma? Chroma. Chroma from Knit Picks. There are definitely a lot of yeah. options for that um, self, like that marled looking mm -hmm. yarn. So I forgot um, her. Oh shoot, I don't remember her name, but she, the one that we helped you help pick out the uh, fluff and stuff. She's gonna spin her own. Oh uh, yeah, she, who's friends with um, Tori? Tori, yeah. Tori, she, she was gonna spin her own. I'm so bad with names. I'm so sorry. It, uh, um, but anyway, the uh, she's yes. Yeah, she, you you can spin your own if you if you know how to spin. You spin it in what is this called? I think that, I don't know if that's called barber pull sure something spin it like that um that so actually those are, yeah that wasn't too bad that's not as bad as i thought but no so that was i think that's everything i think oh, and we'll, we got these yes our awesome brooklyn general t-shirts this is the 20th anniversary uh design and i have the their regular design yeah so they're very very comfortable they are very comfortable so i think that's it i think we should call it Okay. We won't do like our reading and watching because we really haven't done much watching of anything. Sure. And we do have to running around to do before the birthday yeah. party. Does anybody have a, like a quick question or two that they want to ask? Well, you can spend the next like few minutes. Ask away. But it's been uh, it's been really fun, and our our couple of weeks going forward are going to be pretty um, busy. So actually, Valerie, I'm so happy you said that because I couldn't think of that. But that's a great place as a Zauber ball. The yes. crazy one. And we will be going to New England Sheep and Wool. That's mm -hmm. like two weeks after Rhinebeck, I think. Yeah, that's in November. How do we pick shawl colors? I think it's a mood. I think right? so, too. I think yeah. it's a mood. And a good way to do it and that never fails is when you have your colors together is to take a black and white photo to see if you're going to get the contrast that you're looking for. If, if you're looking you want for contrast. contrast. Right. Um, yeah, we will be going to Woolen Folk. Um, we're not doing the podcast or patio this year. This year, we just get to kind of hang out and yes. walk around and shop and say hi. And yep, we might do a little meet and greet. Yeah, maybe we'll do a meet and greet at Woolen Folk. I don't know. We'll figure it all out. Um, Rhinebeck, so Rhinebeck, we just kind of go to the hill. And, yeah. And whatever happens, happens there. Right. 
We don't usually schedule a time. So like we get there between 11 and 12 usually on the head. Actually, one last thing before we forget. We have a viewer who was supposed to go to Woolen Folk and Rhinebeck and they are not able to make it. Oh, shoot. They already purchased their tickets and they have offered the tickets to one of you guys if you have not purchased yours already. So if you plan on going to Woolen Folk and Rhinebeck, you do not have your tickets. Um, just leave a comment with the word FOMO. Yeah. With FOMO down below F O M O. We will reach out to the person who we choose by next weekend so that, you know, ahead of time. And then the only stipulation with the tickets from this person who can't go is that they would like you to take a picture with us. So we would do that on the hill at Rhinebeck. Well, that's so sweet. So definitely. Um, so this is the one and only time where we will be contacting you. Yeah. Um, And so we will not ask for any information. We'll just. And then we'll ask you to email. Term for your own, your own safety. So you're not sharing any information. Um, and we'll ask you to email us at needles at the ready um, podcast at gmail.com. And we will confirm it there and all of those fun things. Yes. So we'll be choosing pretty quickly just because it's coming up soon. So, uh, so yeah, great, great point. Good, good memory. Um, and then, so Rhinebeck is in the same location. Woolen folk has moved. They were going to have it in an orchard. Yes. In Kingston, New York. It is now moved about a half an hour North of that in the city of Catskill. Yeah. So it is also north of Socrates, where India Entangled is that Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it is definitely go to Woolen Folk's website. They uh, posted about there. It part of the reason is weather wise. If Woolen Folk happened this past weekend, it would have been a wash, right? Nobody would have been able to go. So it is an area where there is some indoor shopping available, some outdoor as well. So uh, plenty of parking from what we saw through the live, but I think it's going to be a better location than an orchard uh, just so that, you know, you're not outside if it happens to rain. Yeah. Um, all right. But I think that is all. We thank you guys for joining us on such short notice and we apologize for all the ads we mentioned about that earlier. So hopefully now we can um, get that situated once we end this live stream. Yeah. And then I think it's the first time we've gone live since the changes. Yeah. So thank you for joining us and we will see you guys in two weeks. Have a good fortnight. Bye. Bye y'all.